The 2nd of February, 1943, Stalingrad, the Soviet Union. The German 6th Army, after five months of fierce fighting and heavy casualties, having exhausted their ammunition and food, finally capitulates, making it the first of Hitler's field armies to surrender during World War II. The battle for the city proves a decisive psychological turning point, ending a string of German victories in the summer of 1942 and beginning the long retreat westward. The Soviet army remains on the offensive, and on the 27th of January, 1945, enters Auschwitz, the largest of the extermination centers, and liberates more than 7,000 remaining prisoners, who are mostly ill and dying. It is estimated that a minimum of 1.3 million people were deported to Auschwitz between 1940 and 1945, and of these, at least 1.1 million were murdered. One of the main perpetrators responsible for these atrocities is Otto Moll. Otto Moll was born on the 4th of March, 1915, in hohen then part of the German Empire. Following World War I, which ended on the 11th of November, 1918, a number of right-wing extremist political groups emerged in Germany. One of them was the Nazi Party, which claimed that the Jews had done much to spread defeatism and thus destroy the German army. They interpreted the terms of the Versailles Peace Treaty and the steep compensation payments that it entailed as revenge by the victors and a glaring injustice. Beginning with the onset of the Great Depression, the Nazi party rose rapidly from obscurity to political prominence, becoming the largest party in the German parliament in 1932, winning 33.1% of the vote. The communists, however, gained votes as well, winning 16.9%. As a result, the small circle around President Paul von Hindenburg came to believe that the Nazi party was Germany's only hope to forestall political chaos ending in a communist takeover. Nazi negotiators and propagandists did much to enhance this impression. When on the 30th of January 1933, President von Hindenburg appointed Adolf Hitler Chancellor of Germany, Otto Moll was 17 years old. Three years later, in 1936, Moll joined the SS after having graduated from the professional gardening school. The SS, Schutzstaffel, or Protection Squads, was originally established in April 1925 to protect Adolf Hitler and other Nazi leaders and speakers and provide security for political meetings. SS members were subject to strict military discipline and swore an oath of complete loyalty to Hitler and those appointed by him. In January 1929, Heinrich Himmler became the head of the SS, and the organization greatly expanded in size and strength. By the time Hitler came to power in 1933, Himmler had made the SS the dominant organization within the Reich. From the beginning of the Nazi regime, Hitler entrusted the SS first and foremost with the removal and eventual murder of political and so-called racial enemies of the regime. The SS became a virtual state within a state in Nazi Germany and was staffed by SS men who perceived themselves as the racial elite of the Nazi future. From 1939, the SS assumed responsibility for solving the so-called Jewish question, which then culminated in 1941 when the leadership planned, coordinated and directed the so-called final solution. This solution, in which Otto Moll would play a crucial role, was the genocide of European Jews during World War II, also known as the Holocaust. SS officers were directly responsible for the management of concentration camps, where millions of Jews were murdered by poison gas. Otto Moll was musically active and became a member of the SS marching band. When during a journey with his marching band from Bernau to Oranienberg, the SS truck collided with a car, one SS man was killed, and Moll was critically injured. He was treated in Bernau Hospital for several months, suffering from a fractured skull and losing an eye. It has been suggested that his brain was damaged too, and as a result, he became a physically and mentally ill person, who was deliberately exploited as a murderer by the criminal Nazi regime. From 1938, Moll was employed at the Sachsenhausen concentration camp, which was located north of Berlin. The camp held Jews, homosexuals, Jehovah's Witnesses, Roma and Sinti people, and later, Soviet civilians. At Sachsenhausen, Otto Moll worked as the head of the gardener's work detail and was protected by Rudolf Haas, who belonged to the camp's leadership. 
The Second World War began on the 1st of September 1939, when Nazi Germany invaded Poland. The last operational Polish unit surrendered on the 6th of October. The German occupation of Poland was exceptionally brutal. The Nazis considered Poles to be racially inferior, and they launched a campaign of terror intended to destroy the Polish nation and culture, and to reduce the Poles to a leaderless population of peasants and workers, laboring for German masters. In May 1940, around 60 kilometers west of Krakow, the Germans established Auschwitz concentration camp. The direct reason for the establishment of the camp was the fact that the mass arrests of Poles were increasing beyond the capacity of existing local prisons. The camp's commandant became Rudolf Haas, and the first 30 prisoners, the German criminals with green badges, arrived in Auschwitz on the 20th of May 1940 from the Sachsenhausen camp. The Greens, as these 30 German prisoners were called, did much to establish the sadism of early camp life, which was directed particularly at Polish inmates. The first transport of Polish male prisoners, including Catholic priests and Jews, arrived in Auschwitz on the 14th of June, 1940, from Tarnów in Poland. They were given serial numbers 31 to 758. On the 2nd of May, 1941, Hearst brought to Auschwitz Otto Moll, who lived in the camp with his wife and two daughters. His first wife, Ellie, had also worked in the concentration camp, but died of blood poisoning in 1940. Moll remarried only a few weeks after her death. Many former Auschwitz prisoners described Otto Moll as the worst SS man in the entire camp. He distinguished himself with a particular sadism towards the prisoners, and because he had a glass eye, he had the nickname Cyclops. At Auschwitz, Moll first supervised the agricultural commando. Thanks to his drive and toughness, in June 1942, he became the leader of the notorious penal company, to which the prisoners were assigned for various reasons, including escape attempts, contact with civilians, or the illegal possession of food, money, and additional clothing. Assignment to the penal company, situated in the infamous Block 11, lasted from one month to one year, and the prisoners were not only completely isolated from the other prisoners, but had to perform the hardest labor, and were continually beaten by the SS men and prisoner functionaries. After the expansion of Auschwitz into an extermination camp, ordered by the head of the SS Heinrich Himmler, Moll devoted himself primarily to the killing of people. Before the large crematoria and gas chambers were set up in Birkenau, which was the largest of the more than 40 camps and subcamps that made up the Auschwitz complex, Moll and his Nazi comrade Franz Hersler had erected the mass killings in Crematorium 1 and the gas chambers of the so-called Bunkers 1 and 2. Mass graves were dug in their immediate vicinity, in which several hundred thousand corpses were buried until September 1942. After some deaths among the SS men and their relatives occurred, as a result of the contaminated groundwater, the mass graves were opened and the corpses were burned from September to November of the same year. In 1943, the four large crematoria and gas chambers in Auschwitz-Birkenau went into operation. The process of selection and murder was carefully planned and organized. When a train stopped on the platform, the arrivals were lined up into two columns, men and boys in one, women and girls in the other. The SS physicians, such as Josef Mengele, performed a selection. The only criterion was the appearance of the prisoners, whose fate, for labor or for death, was determined at will. The veteran prisoners gathered the belongings of the new arrivals in an area known as Canada, which consisted of several barracks which were used to store the stolen belongings of the prisoners. Trucks carried those too infirm to walk, and the rest marched. Before entering the gas chambers, people were ordered to disrobe. The SS men kept the people fated to die, unaware of what awaited them, and made the new arrivals believe that they were being sent to the camp where work was waiting for them, but first they had to undergo disinfection and bathe. However, they were taken into the gas chambers, and after the doors were shut, SS men dropped Zyklon B pellets through the vents in the roof or holes in the side of the chamber. On one occasion, a truck full of prisoners was being driven to a gas chamber, but turned so suddenly that a woman's child, about three years old, fell out. Otto Moll, who was driving behind the truck, took the child by the neck and then by the leg and smashed his head against a guardhouse wall, killing him on the spot. Moll then drove up to the truck and threw the child's lifeless corpse to his mother. For his merits in killing innocent men, women and children, 
Hitler decorated Moll with a war merit cross, first class with swords, on the 20th of April 1943. This cast significant light on his importance in the extermination of Jews. In addition to him, only Commandant Hurst and Josef Kerr, the head of the SS Disinfection Commando, were decorated with this medal among the Auschwitz personnel. From September 1943 to May 1944, Moll was the first commandant of the First and Gruben Gleiwitz I, which were Auschwitz subcamps. In May 1944, he returned to the Auschwitz Birkenau camp, where he was appointed the head of all crematoria by the camp's commandant, Rudolf Hers. During this period, the extermination of Hungarian Jews was to take place. Moll was aware of the fact that the planned 10 to 15,000 corpses per day would overwhelm the crematoria's ovens. So just before the arrival of the Hungarian transports, Moll ordered fire pits to be dug alongside the crematoria, which he provided with a gutter system of his own design. People from the incoming transports were to be shot and then burned in these fire pits. In this way, fat from the burning corpses would be drained off, collected, picked up by the inmates with buckets, and tipped into the flames to burn. In his speeches to the new arrivals, who were unaware of what awaited them, Moll repeated that they were being sent to the camp where work was waiting for them, but first they had to undergo disinfection and bathe. Moll told them politely to hang their clothing on hooks, take a shower, and even promised they would be provided with soup and tea or coffee. However, they were taken into the gas chambers, locked in, and killed with Cyclone B gas. The victims were dead within 20 minutes. Johann Kremer, the SS doctor who oversaw the gassings, testified that the shouting and screaming of the victims could be heard through the opening, and it was clear that they fought for their lives. Moll often strolled through the crowd of arrivals scheduled for gassing, observed them undressing, and lured small children away from their mothers with sweets in order to throw them outside into the boiling fat of the fire pits. On a few occasions, he was seen picking children up by their hair and then holding them suspended while he shot them. When there were so many incoming transports that the gas chambers and crematoria were incapable of containing all the new arrivals, Moll's fire pits to burn the corpses were used. The excess people were generally shot, one at a time, often by Moll himself or by other SS men, especially Erich Musfeld. When some people asked Moll to spare their life, he replied, an order is an order, and then killed him without any remorse. The Jews were shot in the back of their head and dropped into the fire. It sometimes happened that some prisoners put up a fight or children cried. As a punishment, Moll would throw them into the burning pits alive. Even among the SS men, Moll was notorious for his cruelty and hatred towards the Jews, especially women and children. When he did not throw the children into the fire alive, with a smile on his face, he would kick them to death. The prisoners did not consider him a human, and would call him Schweinemetzger, which meant pig butcher. One Holocaust survivor later testified, Moll was called a pig butcher because he was not a human being, but a butcher who threw children alive into the fire. Moll often led attractive Jewish women to the edge of the fire pits to enjoy their fear. He would whisper lewd words into their ears, then shoot them in the back of the head and drop them into the fire. Another of Moll's specialties was setting his dog on naked women. The dog would bound towards them in a rage, chasing them towards the fire pits while biting and snapping at their legs and buttocks. Moll would then shoot the poor women in their stomach so that they would fall over and watch them burn alive. The fire pits were also used for smaller groups of victims, consisting of up to 200 people. The reason was that using Zyklon B gas for such a small number of people was considered to be uneconomical and therefore wasteful. As a result, the Germans drove the Hungarian children, as well as the sick, old, and disabled people by truck to the fire pits, where Moll and his colleagues, who had been instructed to shoot them by hand or throw them alive into the flames, were waiting for them. During eight weeks from the 15th of May to the 9th of July 1944, Hungarian gendarmerie officials, under the guidance of German SS officials, deported around 424,000 Jews from Hungary to Auschwitz-Birkenau, where upon arrival and after selection, SS functionaries killed the majority of them in gas chambers. As the head of all crematoria, Moll also directed the work of the Jewish Zollert Commando, which was a unit of camp prisoners forced to help with the disposal of gas chamber victims. Those who refused to do the terrible work of the Zollert Commando 
Mole would personally throw alive into the burning furnaces. On one occasion, when he found jewelry in the possession of one of the members of the Jewish Sonderkommando, he poured gasoline over him and set him on fire. Moll was also known for being an excellent marksman, and when he felt that the prisoners from the Sonderkommando were not working properly, he would shoot them from considerable distances. One of the very few survivors of the Sonderkommando, a Slovak prisoner Philip Merler, described Moll's atrocities in the greatest detail. Among other things, Muller reported on the sadistic death torture of frog swimming practiced by Otto Moll. Moll chased selected prisoners into one of the extinguishing ponds next to the crematoria and forced them at gunpoint to swim there, croaking constantly until they died of exhaustion. Muller also recalled how Otto Moll had invented camp games such as brick bashing, in which two groups of prisoners had to smash as many bricks as possible for a certain amount of time and the losing team was then shot on the spot by Maul. Among Maul's many sadistic specialties also belonged beating people with clubs and iron bars or throwing them against the electric fences. After the end of the extermination of Hungarian Jews, Maul returned to the position of head of the Glavitz 1 subcamp. In mid-January 1945, as Soviet forces approached the Auschwitz concentration camp complex, the SS began evacuating Auschwitz and its subcamps. SS units forced nearly 60,000 prisoners to march west from the Auschwitz camp system. These forced marches of concentration camp prisoners became known as death marches. The prisoners had to march over long distances, under guard, and in extremely harsh conditions. Inmates suffered from the cold weather, starvation, and exposure on these marches. Otto Moll led one such death march, and in February 1945, he arrived in Kaufering, which was the common name of a system of 11 subcamps of the Dachau concentration camp system. The conditions in Kaufering were horrible. The prisoners deported to each of the 11 subcamps had to construct the accommodation themselves. The resulting huts, partially buried for camouflage from aerial reconnaissance, were completely inadequate for the weather conditions. Rain and snow leaked through the earthen roofs, and vermin infested the huts. Prisoners had to sleep on straw that had been spread on the floor. What little food the prisoners did have was taken by the SS guards and those who were sick were fed even less. There were even incidents of cannibalism, and some prisoners were so desperate to escape their horrible reality that they would try to commit suicide by throwing themselves into the electrical fencing. At Kalfering, Maul abused and killed prisoners, as well as willfully neglecting their care. During the Kaufring camp's existence, between June 1944 and April 1945, 15,000 out of the 30,000 prisoners died from hunger, disease, execution, or during the death marches. A few days before the subcamps of Kaufring were liberated, between the 24th and 27th of April 1945, by the 7th United States Army, Otto Moll had forced prisoners on a death march to the Dachau concentration camp. During this death march, he was involved in the shooting of at least 120 Russian prisoners who were too weak or sick to continue marching any further. Moll himself shot 26 of them. On the 28th of April, 1945, Otto Moll arrived at Dachau. When the camp was liberated on the following day by the US 7th Army's 45th Infantry Division, the soldiers could smell not only human excrement, but also decaying bodies, and many of these soldiers cried or vomited as they found dozens of railroad cars filled with thousands of dead bodies and 30,000 survivors who looked like walking skeletons. Many inmates were sick and dying from typhus epidemics and starvation. Otto Moll was arrested at the beginning of May 1945 and finally to face justice and pay for his crimes. From the 15th of November 1945, he was tried at the first Dachau trial, which was held within the compound of the former Dachau concentration camp. On the 13th of December 1945, the US military tribunal found Otto Moll guilty of fatally shooting 26 prisoners who had collapsed from exhaustion during the death march from Kalfering and sentenced him to death by hanging. Moll's crimes at Auschwitz were not part of the indictment, and he was never prosecuted for them. Half a year after his death sentence, he was confronted by his former superior, Rudolf Hess, during the Nuremberg trials. Even though Moll admitted to some of his crimes, he largely denied his involvement in the killing of Jews. However, if he hoped that his lies would help him escape justice, he was wrong. On the 28th of May, 1946, Otto Moll, then 31 years old, was executed in the courtyard of the Landsberg prison. 
there were no tears shed for Otto Moll. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.